Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Time for game three between Millenniums, Stefano, and of course, Marine King Prime. Marine King is going to be the red Terran at the top right hand corner of uh, Daybreak, and Stefano is kind of had another brain fart right there. Stefano is going to be the pink Zerg, of course. Do I even need to mention pink? He's always pink. And he's going to be the pink Zerg at the bottom left. It's interesting to note that players always kind of have their color preferences, and, 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 and uh, it's been known that in some tournaments, before the match begins, they're kind of picking their colors in the lobby, and a player knowing that this player likes to pick a certain color will actually pick his color just to kind of get in his head and piss him off. I've known some players to do that. Uh, of course, nobody does that against Stefano, because Stefano has already, he's grandfather claws himself into the pink, col pink color, and if you pick his pink color, you'll have millions of raging mobs against you, uh, ready to tear your head off, so you can't do that. Uh, anyways, so final pink Zerg down in the bottom left. We'll see what happens. It's the final game here from Group B, and um, this is, of course, from IPL4. Uh, one thing to note here is I have been leaving health bars on. It seems like you guys really, really prefer the health bars, and I'm not going to blame you guys. Every, every tournament, every cast takes them out, but it gives you so much information, and there's only the need to take health bars out if there's a huge battle going on, like massive, and the health bars are cluttering everything. So I'm just going to leave him on. It seems like people like it. And, um, uh, oh, that SCV. Oh, no, it's going to get repaired at the last second. It's like, repair me, buddy. Save me from certain death. And it looks like Stefano will not get that drone kill. That was, or SCV kill. It was kind of close. But uh, he might just go for it here, man. That is so risky. He wants it. He wants it bad. He's gonna, he got it. He got the uh, SCV. Unreal. And I cannot believe Marine King just lost an SCV to a drone. He could have easily microed that. And I'm making a big deal. It's not really that big of a deal, but it's a big deal right now because there's really nothing else going on. And really, every little thing does kind of matter. It's one less SCV for the for the, uh, for the the Terran player. And that drone did such a good job of staying alive that it even saw the second gas coming up. So now Stefano, I believe he knows about the command center coming down, or at least he should, you know, he should be able to deduce that, hey, one barracks, most Terran players expand right away on daybreak, and so the second gas here could be indicative of another Banshee opening, it could also be another Blue Flame style, Mass Mech, um, it could be also a bunch of early upgrades with, uh, you know, quick plus one plus one or something really crazy, and, um, Stefano will have to keep his eyes, you know, peeled out for that. What one thing he can kind of re take out of the possibilities here is something like a quick third macro command center. It's not very likely that a Terran player would throw down a third command center if he's already got double gas mining. It's just, you know, that's so weird. If you're going to throw a thir thir quick third command center, that's because you want to be greedy and uh, and focus on your economy, but not so much on technology. So before this game really starts to cook up a little bit, I just wanted to say, I uh, hope you guys have been seeing, watching the Pro League. The games were really, really, really good um, in the Pro League. And it's just fun to watch some of the pro StarCraft Brood War players finally taking on StarCraft 2. Those of you guys who used to watch me back in the Brood War days, I, can I just get like a post in the comment section down below if you did? Because I just want to give you guys mad props, man. You guys have watched me for years. And uh, I was casting Brood War when I had something like, I don't know, like 10,000 subscribers? I was, I was puny. I was little, small, small, small sticks, you know? And so you guys were what made it possible for me to kind of build up to, to where I am today. I really, really want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for being, uh, for being there for me for so long. I love Brood War. It's my game. And I'm so excited that, that players are finally making the switch over to StarCraft 2, man. It's going to be awesome. Oh, no. Oh, no. The <laughs> mules are trying to run away. There's sharks in the water. Oh, he's gonna not. Oh, he's gonna save both. That was so close. And those two mules just barely staying alive. And that that matters because each one of these mules probably at the end of their lifespan now, but still worth a good I don't know 200 to 300 minerals. So excuse me, still worth maybe like 100 or something like that. And here comes the Hellions coming in. Just a quick Hellion harass. Note that Marine King is going once again for Cloak Banshees. And Stefano should have an inkling that's coming. Uh, he's actually making a pretty fast Baneling Nest here. Whoa. Uh-oh. Could Stefano, he's already got speed. Oh my goodness. Could Stefano be going for a Roach Baneling all in here? Now, he's done a pretty good job of keeping the Hellions away, so MKP does not know this is coming. 
And I'm pretty sure we're going to have a Roach Baneling all in from Stefano. No bunkers up yet from MKP. Now, the Banshees really aren't that good against Roach Baneling all in. And you might say, well, they're air and Roach Banelings can't hit them. That is, that is absolutely true. But at the same time, with so many Roaches and Banelings on the field, uh, it's very hard to kill them all. So what you have to do as Terran is send this on the offense. And while your base is under attack, do a lot of back damage. You have to kind of even out with this Banshee and kill a ton of drones and hope the queens are not large in number. And the one thing here is when you go for Roach Baneling all in, you're not going to have a lot of queens. You're just going to have two, one for each hatchery for injection. So we'll see. It's really going to come down to this Banshee for MKP and how well he can micro at the front door. Stefano has so many roaches and banelings though! My goodness! I think MKP could just be done for now. The Banshee has begun to do its damage. It is cloaked. It's gonna start to kill off the drones. The drones running away to mitigate the damage. Roaches and banelings now coming in. That natural is going to definitely go down. The banelings trying to detonate on the front wall. Needs to get a couple more baneling hits here though. Trying to micro his units and finally busts his way through. He should finish off the reactor and that supply depot or natural causes of fire should do so as well. And now he's inside the base. The Banshee, the Banshee, meanwhile, has only gotten five drone kills. Not really enough, and he's pulling it back now for defensive purposes. Oh my god, MKP has some micros, SCDs, and mitigate damage. He's already lost 16 workers, though. But you have to remember, guys, that, that that's all fair in war. And Sapano has to get a lot of drone kills right now because, face it, he went for this all in, and he has to kill drones in order to, he has to kill SCDs in order to have a transition out of this because it doesn't look like he's going to kill off MKP outright. He, he, he actually has been halted here. Unreal. And as unbelievable as it might sound, it looks like the game might reset a little bit here because Stefano has done enough damage, but not so much that he's ended the game. But enough to be able to transition into another hatchery. And yeah, <laughs> we're actually going to have a, 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 a transition out of this into a standard game here. The Banshees, you know, killing off a decent number of drones. But at this point, you know, the worker count pretty even here. 33 over 29. And uh, if MKP man, if he can maybe just kill off a couple more drones, that would be really good for him. He's been able to secure the natural. And where is he going to go from here? Going to throw down a third command center trying to macro his way out of this uh into the mid game and potentially late game no surprises there no surprises there and this is pretty crazy early aggression into a more standard style here now i don't think this banshee i don't think it's gonna get the actual evolution chamber it'd be nice but he will not and once again the greed for mkp may be just costing him a little bit uh, we saw him do that with the uh, third hatchery in the last game on the Tiga shipyard. <laughs> he, he kept three banshees there. He tried to kill it, but there was a billion queens, and then he lost all of his banshees, except for one. Now, do note, guys, we have a transition into bio here from MKP, but before he makes that transition into bio with, with the, you know, the combat shields, the stim pack, and all that stuff, he's making an attack here with marauders and hellions and banshees. Such a weird play by MKP. Maybe just trying to kill off this evolution chamber before it can get its upgrade done. He cloaks his banshees, but there's zerglings coming out. Oh man, MKP's gonna lose all of his ground troops, but he might get the evo chamber! And it falls! He gets the evo chamber, and I, I can't stress how big that is. Well, you know, while Protoss and Terran, that's the matchup that revolves most about having better upgrades, Zerg versus Terran also matters, especially for Stefano, who loves his ground troops. Now, with armor reduced now, he doesn't have plus one armor coming. He still has the Zerglings making an attack. I don't know if they can break up this ramp with this many Marines. Oh, he actually will be able to. So many Zerglings. And he gets up, but there's SCVs being pulled off the line. And now he might just have to go after the natural SCVs and try to kill off as many as possible. Meanwhile, a couple Banshees just kind of running away from the third where there's a Queen and a Spore Caller. There's actually a Baneling being made at the natural, but it was killed off supposedly by MKP. And oh, wow, so much bloodshed so far in this matchup. These guys are like, in the last two games, they were taunting each other, you know, dropping meals, dropping hatcheries, doing everything within their power to humiliate the opponent. And now it's like all the anger and emotion is coming out, trading blow by blow, sending every single unit they can possibly send into the meat grinder for, for, for to spill as much blood as possible. And still the game is actually really close. 71 to 74 supply. I would maybe be inclined to say MKP slightly ahead. 
And while the bases, you know, while it's two to three bases, you know, he has more supply right now. And that last attack from Stefano, and I don't know if it really killed off that many SCVs. Worker kill tab, 32 to 23. So while, yeah, he did kill off a lot, he lost quite a bit to those Banshees overall in the long run as well. Now, you know, Stefano still not giving up with this assault, man. I don't think speedless Banes are the answer anymore. I, I don't know, man. Th these Banelings, I, I doubt their ability to do much. They do have the element of surprise, though, coming through the backside. Oh my god, he's going to try to go for an ambush, but no! That is why Terran players built that secondary wall purely with supply depots at the front. It may cost you supply-wise. It may be... Uh, a risk to your buildings, but it keeps your SCVs alive, and I cannot stress how important that is. What would you rather lose? Supply depots or SCVs? Duh. So, uh, here comes an attack now from MKP. He has finished stim pack. He has not gotten combat shields yet, but it's on the way, and he has 2-2 two, two coming for his bio as well. So this is a big assault where Safano was, he had his plus one armor delayed in a big, big way. And this is this this attack here is completely revolving around trying to strike the Zerg player before plus one armor is finished. But it might just be so many Zerglings on the ground here that he's just gonna get overrun. It's a complete mauling of his ground troops. And he must sound the alarms, ring the bells, and evacuate the area. You know, that, that, that could have been a complete disaster. And it actually was a disaster. Um, it just wasn't, uh, you know, a level 5 disaster. It was kind of like a level 3.5. And, and now he's going to have to worry about this counterattack. Raise the supply depot wall! Oh my god, he doesn't raise the wall up! And, uh, you know, thankfully for him, the Zerglings did not decide to run inside. I think he could have done a lot of damage if Stefano wanted to. But the thing is, uh, Stefano, you know, he doesn't know. He doesn't know what's behind these walls. It's like behind door number one, there's a bunch of demons and monsters. And behind the door number two, billions and billions of siege tanks. So you take your pick. And uh, he just didn't want to really take the risk there. And he's going to fall back and play the more conservative style. If, if this game could be called anything but conservative. Let's look at what kind of upgrades we have coming here. It looks like Infestation Pit is coming. Stefano likes the Roachling Infestor style much more than the Muta Baneling. And uh, it looks like he's making an attack with Zerglings right now. He gets us around on the tanks. Oh my goodness. And the tank not getting the last one though. I don't know how MKP kept that one alive. That guy, that, that, that guy inside that siege tank right there, he better be counting his blessings right now, man. He just barely survived death. And uh, it looks like Stefano will pull back once again. This is, this is kind of how Stefano plays Zerg versus Terran. It's all about aggression into expansion, into, uh, into mass um, hive tech units. And this is how you play StarCraft II at the very, very high level. You don't just expand. You expand while applying pressure. That is the hallmark of a very good StarCraft II player. We saw it in the uh, GSL Finals with Squirtle and MVP. You don't expand unless you apply aggression. And that was especially true from MVP's point of view. Now let's see here, MKP is still holding that upgrade advantage. My puppy Haley is going berserk because she knows how crazy this game is right now. Three bases to four, five bases actually pretty soon for Stefano. But this is a big attack, man. He's got a lot of upgrades on his side. And uh, he's now having to bust through the creep. And he should drop down Comsats first. But the thing is, MKP is kind of one of those players who doesn't kill off the creep tubers. And oh! He's going to totally get overrun here by Zerglings and Banelings. Who cares if Safano doesn't have the upgrade advantage? He just mauled MKP's forces and just completely wrecked the house. And unfortunately for him, he didn't have enough, or maybe he did have enough for a fungal on the medevacs, but they did retreat out of the way. Now trying to chase him down to maybe get the medevacs. This is so risky by Safano. What is he doing? Oh, he could have lost an investor there, but MKP was not microing that marine. And uh, now MKP having to fall back. This is pretty risky for MKP. The Zerglings now beginning to control the middle of the map. Not only on Daybreak do you have to worry about the natural, but when the Zerg, or any force for that matter, controls the center, you also have to worry about the third expansion as well, as it is vulnerable by ground terrain. That's very, very risky business. And MKP realizing that he needs to control the Zenonga Tower. Now, as we're approaching the late game here, what 
mo what how Zerg versus Terran really works in the late game is you know the Zerg gets eventually to Brute Lord Infester. That is the most powerful composition possible in Zerg vs. Terra. I don't care what you say, Brute Lord Infester owns. But there is a stepping stone to get up there. You can't just rush right for Brute Lord Infester. You have to get Ultras first because they're meaty, they're tanky, they allow you to buy time, and they're pretty good against the Terran Bio Ball. So what we see here is the Ultras beginning to make their way out and eventually the Brute Lords will come. MKP has to make timing attacks happen before that army is realized. And I love what he did here. He takes out one of the Zerg hatcheries, and that is really going to hamper Brute Lord Infester. They need the gas to pull it off, and so one hatchery now down. It is three bases to four bases, and Marine King has to be happy about that. Will he make a continued push? No, and I, I really don't think he should. You know, last game he pulled it off, but that that's so risky, and this time he is going to play it much safer. You kill off the fourth hatchery, and you play it safe. You expand behind that. You control the center of the map. We can see right here MKP kind of trying to decide where to go from here. One more command center going to the middle of the map. He should secure that. I would love for him to fall back right now and play safe and maybe just assault with medevac drops. Oh, he gets a scan! Oh, that was so lucky from his point of view, getting the Infester as well before it could ambush him. And now here comes the Zerg forces. I don't know why MKP is attacking this area. He's going to get his army killed off. No, he will not. Reinforcing once again. And you know what? The, the beauty is he does have the high ground. And I guess he didn't completely overextend himself because as long as he stays on the high ground of Daybreak, on these ramps, then he doesn't have to worry that much about the Zerg ground units. Zerg is all about melee, and as long as you have better positioning, you can win out despite the numbers, despite being behind. And, uh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Two medevacs here, but there's no infestors nearby to fungal. It looks like uh, Stefano has to pull his infestors back to the main, realizing that the drop is impending. There's a spore crawler and a queen there, trying to take out one of the medevacs first. Drops a chance. He is on the frontal queen. He kills off a medevac. But... Uh, how much damage will this drop do? Unlikely that'll do much. It was a diversion though, as most of the ground troops are pushing through the center here, but there isn't really a hatchery to kill off that's mining. It's just this one in the pocket. And I think what MKP should do here is maybe kill off this hatchery and set up his tanks and begin to exterminate the creep tumors and just hold position outside the Zerg base. Safano likewise needs to be very careful here. I would like for him maybe to move some troops outside here and maybe get a surround. Uh, he has a lot of ultras, but it has to be very careful. He didn't uh, destroy the ramp here. And so the, the choke point really gonna help out the Terran, but oh, fungal growth. Oh my God, what a fungal chain fungling the medevacs down. And now will he bust through? No, he will not. That choke point is so deadly. Despite Marine King obviously having lesser number of units here, he can do so much damage at the choke. Gets bungled once again, getting so cost effective. Is Marine King right now with just little numbers of units. And now finally, the surround happens and MKP tank army is going to drop. But just like I love, oh, I love, I love UV from Terran, the cheater Terran of the day's past, his macro continues on. And this is off Crete, so I think MKP should be able to clear out these ultras. That's why Marauders and Tanks are so good against Ultralists. They do that plus extra damage to Armored. And I think MKP is going to... Mm, it's such a tenuous game. You know, I don't know if he wants to push or if he wants to just play it safe. It's very, very close. You're trying to desperately mine money right now. Minerals is what Terran players need to continue the long assault here, the long warfare against Zerg. They need money for Marines. My puppy is... Haley is just crying right now like a little baby. So I have to take care of it after this game. Here comes the Ultralis. Safano coming in. I don't think he's got enough backup though for the Ultras. Ultras very much like Colossus. You can't just send them in there without backup. They're terrible. And uh, oh man, he is going to lose all of his Ultras. He did do some pretty good cleave damage, but there's so many 3-3 bio units. Oh, Marine King on the way to winning in the group stage here. If he can cave off another hatchery, then I don't think Safano can get back in this game. And Safano loses a hatchery. Oh, man. Here comes the investors once again. But at this point, Safano has got to be sweating bullets, man. He has got to have his shirt drenched. I would not want to be in the same booth as him because it probably smells very, very bad. <laughs> He's got to be really, really stressed right now because he just lost one of his key hatcheries at the top left. And now, you know, he is down a base of the Terran player. It's usually not a situation you want to be in, Ezra. You do not want to be down a base to a Terran. Uh, you do not want to be down in supply. 
but I have seen Stefano pull off some pretty miraculous comebacks. He is capable of doing the craziest things when you thought all, all chances of winning were gone. He can do it, and that's what he needs to do! What a fungal! Wow, what a fungal! How did that investor get back there? And he actually killed off, I don't know, maybe half, maybe more than half of all the SCVs there. So now, all of a sudden, what's the economy? 71 to 47? Oh man, if he could just establish a fourth expansion, get some mining going, maybe get this expansion going as well, then he could be in a pretty good situation, but it's push, man, it's coming once again. Tanks on the high ground. He's trying to funnel his units through. And MKP coming from all angles. This is Stefano's point of view. It's like a never-ending stream of Terran units, and he has to fall back to his own natural he cannot continue to defend here, and I don't think he can win this game. I think MKP is on the verge of victory, ladies and gentlemen. And the best of three in the group stage, almost certainly now in the hands of Marine King Prime. What a job. Spectacular, fantastic by Marine King. And a very long, drawn out 30 minute game between two of the best StarCraft 2 players that the world has to offer today. Just moments away here from here, the GG Neo is beginning to drop down as well. The Ultralis has fallen, and with, you know, this many medevacs, that's the thing with Terran. If you have this many medevacs, you can just assault and assault and assault. The only thing you have to worry about is fungal growth, but as long as you keep the medevacs alive, you can heal, you can run away from, from any type of nasty surrounds, and there it is! Well played, congrats, and Stefano has left the game. Now, I'm sorry guys, I can't actually go through the replay right now because my puppy is going berserk and I'm, I fear to look behind me because I think she's probably peed and pooped all over my carpet. So I'll be back in the next cast, signing HD signing out.